Welcome back to Acosta's Anatomy. In this video, we're going to talk about meiosis. More specifically, we're going to discuss spermatogenesis as well as oogenesis. So the first thing I want to do is give you an overall picture of, of what's going on here on the board. So we'll start here on the male side. So over here, what we're starting off with is a stem cell. So this stem cell is known as a spermatogonium. So we start off with the spermatogonium, and this is what's known as a diploid cell. So when I say diploid, what I mean is that we say it's 2N. So N represents the number of chromosomes. Therefore, there will be a total of 46 chromosomes here within this diploid cell. So we're starting off here with this diploid cell, and then at the end, we're going to get the formation of our haploid spermatozoa. So these haploid spermatozoa, this is what will fertilize the ovum. So once we fertilize the ovum, we get the formation of the zygote here. So once again, the process here, starting with the, with the oogonium, or this female stem cell. Once again, this is diploid. It starts off here, and then you, in, you end up with the ovum. Okay, so now that we've gone over uh, some of the basics here, now let's look at some of the different uh, details within spermatogenesis. Let's take a closer look at this stem cell. The relationship between these two, these are what's known as homologous chromosomes. So there's a total, humans have a total of 23 pairs of chromosomes. So you get one chromosome from mom, and one chromosome from dad. Here in the middle, both of these are what's known as the centromeres. So if you look at it, you can think of this as pairs for chromosome 1, chromosome 2, as well as chromosome 3. So once, once DNA replication occurs within interphase, that's what results in the entry into meiosis 1. So here within meiosis 1, the phase that this cell is in, this, this cell is within early metaphase because they're starting to line here in the middle. And if we look at from over here from the top, so once, so this chromosome here is going to duplicate itself. So this would be here and then it forms a duplicate. And the relationship between these two, these are what's known as sister chromatids. So this one goes down here and then duplicates itself, so that's one, and then this one over here is, would be this one, and then it duplicates itself and this is another sister chromatid. So these two are sister chromatids and these two are sister chromatids. Once again, these are the centromeres and this is the formation of something which is known as a tetrad. And what's going to pull these homologous, homologous chromosomes apart are these microtubule kinetochores. So they're pulling it in this direction. But once again, we're here with an early metaphase. So if you look here at the next one, this is within late anaphase. So I know it's late anaphase because you can start to see the division here of the cytoplasm and then look at the different the homologous chromosomes which are being uh, pulled apart in this direction. So once again, this is still a diploid cell. So when you move on to the next one, this is, so this is, we're still within meiosis 1 here. And then once we get to number 14, this is where we start meiosis 2. So meiosis 1 is complete. After this, we're starting meiosis 2. So all of these, these are diploid cells. But now we have one single haploid cell. So this is only showing, for instance, this guy coming off here. You could also say that this one could represent this one as well. Because remember, we're getting a total of four here at the bottom. But we're going to follow this one here. So here they're lined up here in the middle 
So once again, this is metaphase two. And then from metaphase two, we have this haploid cell which is going to divide. So then if you look over here, once again, it's similar to what's up here, where it's late anaphase. So it's late anaphase, they're being pulled apart in this direction. So then we now, we complete meiosis two and get the formation of our spermatids. So that's what these guys are. So all of these are haploid cells. You can see each individual haploid cell. And then these spermatids, that's what develops into the spermatozoa. Let's take a look at oogenesis. So once again, we're starting off here with our stem cell. And then after this, number 17, we go into what's known as, this becomes what's known as a primary oocyte. So this primary oocyte, if we look at the phase that it's in, so once again, this is a diploid cell. You can see the formation here of our tetrad, those homologous chromosomes. So they're, start, they're starting to get pulled apart here by these microtubules. And once this is complete, this is what moves on to, this is what develops into our secondary oocyte. So this secondary oocyte, it's going to become haploid once we get the formation of our first polar body. So that's what uh, number 19 here is. So once again, this is a primary oocyte and then this is a secondary oocyte here that's forming once we get rid of the first polar body. So if we look here at number 20, this is our ovulated secondary oocyte. So this ovulated secondary oocyte, you'll see that over here we're getting the formation of our second polar body. So we're only going to get the formation of the second polar body if this secondary oocyte is fertilized by this spermatozoa. So the secondary oocyte, it's going to be arrested within metaphase 2. So it's arrested in metaphase 2 until fertilization occurs. So once fertilization occurs, you can see it's here going, this is a late anaphase. So you can see all of the uh, different microtubules here. So if we look at it earlier, this first polar body, that's what degenerates here into these polar bodies over here, number 21. And then number 21 that's coming up here at the top, this is the formation of the second, the second polar body. So then from there, that's when we'll get the formation of our ovum after the sperm has fertilized the secondary oocyte. And so we get the formation of our zygote once there's a fusion of the pronucleus here from uh, here from the mother and then here from the dad. So this here is the formation of our zygote and then you can see the chromatin here, the nucleus, and then also you can see the, the cytoplasm here on the outside. So now let's do a quick recap. So we started off here with our diploid cell which has a total of 46 chromosomes and 23 pairs of chromosomes. One from mom, one from dad. So you start off with the stem cell and then it then enters meiosis one. So this here is what, re what represents meiosis one and then this is what starts meiosis two. So the completion of meiosis two, we get the formation of four haploid cells. So these four haploid cells, they're known as spermatids, which will, which will then develop into spermatozoa. So then if we look at oogenesis, we start off here with our stem cell and then we get the formation of our a primary, our primary oocyte. So you have the primary oocyte here, which will then develop into the secondary oocyte. So this is diploid, and then once you get the formation of the first polar body, it becomes a haploid cell. So then you get the haploid secondary, the haploid secondary oocyte, and then after fertilization occurs, we get the formation of our uh, second polar body. So first polar body is here, second polar body is coming out. This degenerates into these polar bodies over here, number 21. So once we have our, our haploid 
secondary oocyte. Uh, from there, remember once again, it's stuck in metaphase two. So the spermatozoa will fertilize it, and then we get the formation of our, of our ovum here. So we have this ovum. So once the spermatozoa fuses it, it's become, it becomes an ovum. And then this ovum, <clears throat> this fertilized ovum, then becomes a diploid zygote.